Hey guys, it's Connor aka Connor Ogre, and I'm coming at you with another painting video. Today is uh, March 31st, I'm pretty sure, and this is the day of taping. We'll see if this gets out today or in a couple days. Um, so today, uh, I'm working on saber tusks. There's my two completed ones. Um, I originally did these guys to kind of look like Scar off of uh, Lion King. You know, that very dark lion look with the lighter bottom, dark top, blending in between, and then, you know, some nice, um, some nice ivory bone-colored fangs coming out there in his piercings. And I do tattoos on their, uh, large haunch pieces there. So, uh, some maw pieces. So, uh, as I guys told you, if you've been keeping up to date, I bought, uh, two more. Um, and as well when I was in, and I posted this today, I ordered an Imperial Maneater. So these cats are going to have another buddy coming. And they already have another buddy coming because the, uh, the Skaven Maneater is still coming along nicely. He's just taking me so long. I've, I think I've, I've like restarted him like three times now. Because <laughs> I keep wanting to change a little something. Um, but uh, regardless... Uh, why don't we uh, get the uh, paint on the brush here. Alright, so really what we're doing here is we're taking, um, roll up the sleeves, we're taking, if I even have it anymore, we'll see it, Steel Legion Drab. We're just watering it down like crazy. Give this a shake. Alright. And we're watering this down considerably. Um, I'm just getting a good amount of my brush here. I'm going to put this on my palette. Alright. Fantastic. Gonna take a little bit of water. As you guys know or should know by now, make sure, by God, water down that paint if you're base coating. That is the key to success. It starts with small steps, and that is the first one. Alright, so we're just taking that. And we're just going over it lately. Don't even worry if you see black shining through. I do use black primer for everything. So, the bottom I mentioned, I do have to put a bunch of coats, but I do enjoy the effect that black gives. That darker appearance. I'm not sure if I went over... Uh, Saber tusks and uh, what they're good for. I've played with them in about three games now, and I gotta say, I'm impressed. Every ogre should have these. Every ogre, every ogre player should have these in his uh, his arsenal. And why not? They're 21 points each. They got two wounds. Shitty leadership, but hey, we're not all perfect. With a great movement, I think it's uh, 7 or 8, probably 8. And they fly across the battlefield, and they are incredible at killing war machines. And just harassing, redirecting, you know the works. I'm not really a tactic expert, but y'all know it's good, you know. So, you know, it's been, uh, they've been really fun to play with. They're kind of scary to look at too, like... For us, they look like little cats, right? I mean, we're ogre players, we're used to painting ogres, but geez. For me, who doesn't see any other armies, I mean, I have my Skaven sitting under me, uh, and uh, the High Elves, but uh, they're not really off the sprue yet. I can just tell even by then, if a player is used to looking at those models, seeing a saber toss, that's like, damn, that's a, you know, that's a big ass cat. And if you can scare the opponent in every any way, that is good. Of course, uh, hey, if these guys end up directing some fire, any fire that's taken off your ogres is good, as you guys probably know. I'm thinking about making a Death Star list. Don't know if you guys have any suggestions. If you do, post below. In the uh, comments feed. Oh, there we go. Um, that would be uh, that would be great. 
Always love hearing from you guys. And considering most of you are on the Knob Log, why don't you just go ahead and post that on the Knob Log if you have a good uh, Death Star build. If the Death Star build requires a, uh, and this is what I've been hearing lately, that the Death Star builds require fire bellies. Now I don't have any fire bellies. Because to be honest, I actually really don't like the model. That's crazy, right? Because they are really nice models, but they just don't fit with my theme at all. Like I've never seen where the, the fire and stuff would fit into my, uh, to my army. But as I get more and more into the gaming side of the hobby, I'm starting to see their extreme relevance now. And um, especially in the lower point games that I play in, a fire belly seems like it would uh, tear shit up, so to speak. So, something I may have to look into in the future. We'll see if my uh, if my GW store here, or perhaps my uh, my FLGS has one. But my guess is uh, probably no. Although I think my GW has a, a a gold fag. Is it gold gold fag or gold? I don't know how to say it. Gold fag. I'll just say gold fag. They have one of him. And that's been so tempting to buy because even if I don't run him as Golfag, I could, I could just run him as a man eater, and he looks awesome. That was always one of my plans because I never, no matter what I did, I never wanted to get the uh, the uh, the female man eater. I hate the model. I hate everything about it. Sorry if that's one of your favorites. I can't stand it. Guy mentioned that to me at the store. He said, "Hey man, I were used to work at uh, GW. I got some ogres to sell you if you want." First off, I asked him if they're metal, because he was talking about man-eaters to begin with. He said, man, you need more man-eaters in your army. I said, well, hey, buddy, $29.99 Canadian a pop. I'm working on it, pal, but don't rush me. It takes time, especially when you don't really work. All this school bullshit. So, anywho, where I was getting at with that is that uh, it was always kind of one of my plans to have a, uh, a gold flag in my army. And basically just um, proxy him. Proxy him as a normal uh, ogre man-eater. Because he's a gorgeous model. But the reason I didn't want to buy anything off that guy is... Um, well. He's got metal models. Believe this or not, I actually love fine cast and I love plastic. Uh, some people seem to have a real hard on for uh, metal models. They wish they were back and everything. Sorry. I couldn't stand the damn things, so keep them away from me. I hate metal models. Period. Can't stand pay playing them. I don't like the way they feel. I don't like the weight of them. So. Maybe that's because when I used to paint metal models, I was a really bad painter, and they turned out like a disaster. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. But my guess is, no. Just didn't like metal. And those man-eaters that he were offering me were metal. And I said, hey, you know what? If I've already gone the, um, the resin route, you know, I've already got two guys in the resin. I may as well just stick with it and have a full resin set of guys, you know? It's kind of OCD of me to want them all to be the same weight, but like, I don't know. I think it uh, it works. So the base coats on these guys are pretty much done. I'm, I'm looking at them and I don't see many uh, spaces or anything left. I've certainly got some work to do on the, on the mains of uh, one guy especially. Um, I do all the hair of the model in a Rhinox hide. Okay, uh, Rhinox Hide is a very dark brown and it has a little bit of a, a reddish tinge to it. Not much, but you can see if you water the Rhinox Hide down that it is in fact, um, it does in fact have like a mahogany or purple to it. So, uh, but you don't see that really when you put them on. It comes out very much like a very dark chocolate brown. Which I will do now. Uh, I don't. Also, I, I don't bother watering down Rhinox hide, especially when I'm doing like fur and stuff. Um, again, pro probably should, and I bet you'd make a difference. 
but I just don't bother because um, it's going onto a very like very rough surface, so I don't worry as much about the smooth factor. I just want to get it on there, and so it shall. Oh, just realized I forgot to paint his ear. These uh, saber tusks, they're uh, don't don't be. Um, I hear a lot of stuff that they're hard to paint and people don't like painting them. I understand. Al gave me two because he didn't like painting fur, and uh, well, um, just for, I think for anyone, if you're if you're able to grasp that that way to paint fur, and I think I have grasped it at this point, um, you'd think, hey, well these guys won't be a problem. They're saber tusks, right? They're all fur. Well, you guessed wrong because actually. These guys aren't fur at all. It's all skin. The problem there is that you have to simulate fur without there actually being any. They have hair up on their heads, as you can see. But the rest of them is just, it's, it's I mean, it's, um, it's as smooth as regular ogre skin. The problem is we know that that's not supposed to be skin. So we need to make that skin into fur. So you need to do some, some different types of shading and highlighting that you wouldn't normally do on a flat surface. But it's not hard. They are quite easy to paint once you um, I guess get get some practice in on them. And some people actually just really don't like the model. I used to actually hate the model. The saber test model, I said, geez, that's something that needs to be updated. And I still wish it kind of would be, because, no, I love them. I love saber tusks. And it would be cool to have some new ones. So. Just doing these tufts here behind the legs. Probably the most detail that actually goes into this model. He's got little fur tufts hanging under his tail. Just need to give those a quick dusting with the uh, rhinox hide. The uh, hunter competitions come along great. Am I coming along? I mean, it's done. Looks like we've pretty much uh, decided the winners, but uh, we still have to go over it a little bit more. It's a very, very, uh, very, very close race. Very close. It's going to be very difficult to decide who's winning this one. Got some great entries for all categories. Actually, well. As of right now, we don't have any entries yet. We know there's people out there who've been doing it. They just haven't submitted yet for the regular GW uh, Hunter. So make sure to get those in, guys. But, I mean, the competition for the Forge World Rhinox is quite fierce. We've got, I think, uh, I think we had th three or four people in particular who were very close contenders for... Um, first for many different reasons because everyone everyone's model had different great things about them but uh, looks like it's winding down now I was also going to ask people if they had any ideas for um, Ideas for running man-eaters. Man-eaters seem to be my focus as of late. As soon as I saw them perform in that one game, I just knew I, I those were going to be my new bread and butter. And I think they're turning out to be... Originally, Mornfang were kind of my my focus, mounted heavy cavalry. And they may still again, when I when and if I get my man-eaters, or two more Mornfang. Or uh, my, uh, sorry, not my man-eaters, when I get my... Rhinox Cavalry, I get those at Forge World, like when and if, 
but I'm really liking the theme of the Maneaters right now. And I just think that's so funny because when I first got into Ogres, I didn't like the uh, Maneaters at all. I mean, I like the models, they're cool and everything, but I just, I didn't, I wasn't into them for whatever reason. I said, oh, we got so much other cool shit, I don't want to buy Maneaters. And now, God, I'm uh, obsessed with them. And I think it might have to do with the painting challenge that they provide. Uh, you After you paint so many ogres, and I say so many, but really I have like 1,500 points of ogres. Of actual, just regular ogres, iron guts and stuff. Actually, that's not true at all. How many do I really have? i got a box up here. Let's take them down. Those are all my ogres right here. Regular ogres. There's no heroes in there. And there's, yeah, that's them. So I mean, not that many, but enough to uh, enough that I know how to paint an ogre. Let's say, let's put it that way. That's enough that I know how to paint an ogre. And then, of course, don't forget the. Uh, Lead Belchers and the Mornfang Cavalry and the and the the two, you know, all the other fellows. Um, so you, you I'm trying, you get you get a little bit tired of painting regular ogres. Now you'll, if you're anything like me, you'll always come back and want to paint a regular ogre. Like after painting all these guys and everything, I'll I'll find myself going ugh. Kind of want to just paint a regular old ogre. And I'll get there. I always do. Always do. Key on these guys, don't forget that hair that's on their chests. Very easy to forget about. And it, uh, it adds a lot to the model when it's got that hair going down its... Uh, Going on its chest into its belly. Yeah, it looks really cool. I saw Noah the other day, the movie Noah with um, Russell Crowe. Very interesting movie. Very interesting. I enjoyed it. Um,. I could tell the audience was, uh, there was a very mature audience there, a great number of uh, older generation of people, and I mean that by as in like over, over 60. Also another great number of just, you know, regular old people, just, re you know, when I say regular, I mean like someone who's like 25 to 35 years old. Not that that makes you a regular person, just like that that average age person um, and up in the 40s. So like I said, I, I just felt like I was one of the younger people there, being it, you know, I'll only be turning 22. Oh, I don't know if I ever told you guys my age. Yeah, that's how old I am. Turning 22, which makes me right now 21 as of March 31st, and my birthday is on April 21st. That is the birthday of James McAvoy, who played uh, as the younger Xavier in the X-Men movies. It is also the birthday of the Queen. The more you know, ta-da. So, so that's kind of interesting. Now, I actually kind of forget how I did these guys. I'm looking at them here. I reckon I did a wash after this. I definitely put a wash. But it's not that heavy of a wash because it, like I said it's flat surfaces so I don't know quite <laughs> quite what I did there but we'll start with a wash we will start with a wash of devil and mud I would do uh, maybe we'll use agrax agrax a little lighter so we'll use the agrax earth shade And then it looks like I, I highlighted the top with like a darker brown. My guess is it's probably Mornfang. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did a wash and then I, it looks like I highlighted up on where the bones stick out. Like where, not, not like where the bone protrusions are, but where, where you can see the muscle and, and you know, his big shoulder bone 
you know, per, you know, you can see it out of the skin or uh, popping through. And I highlight it up with uh, what looks like the original color again because there's nothing left of that base coat color. So I must have painted over the whole thing with one of the colors. Yeah. And it looks like I put a purple and red wash on all the areas that are pierced. And then what I like is that last effect that I do is I take that and I, I put three stripes right where their ribs are to make it look like down of the ribs are poking out, like they're hungry. I like that. It's a nice little effect. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. God, I'm so excited to get that next man eater. So excited. He's gonna look top notch. I'm debating right now whether stopping the video and then waiting until I put the wash on because that's such a simple step and then restarting it, posting another video. Or just waiting it out because I mean really we're in dry mode right now and I'm just rambling. And I'm pretty damn hungry, I'd like a shawarma. Oh fuck, I love shawarmas. Pardon my French, but I love shawarma. Love it. You know what, I actually made a, I made a list the other day. Oh my god, I'm totally going to read that list. Let me grab my laptop. I made a list of my favorite foods. Now, I couldn't do a list that was like, uh, and I really, I, I wanted to. I wanted to do a list that was like top 10, top 20, and read off, you know, like in order, like number one, number two. But I couldn't do that because food is just so circumstantial, and I do love food. You know, one day you could really be feeling one, but the other day, you know, maybe not the other. So anyways, I made I made this list. Now this is a, a top, this is a, a 10, top 10 list. But like I just said, they are not in order, okay? Number one, buffalo wings. God damn do I love buffalo wings. Buffalo wings make the world go round for me. Buffalo wings... Fried wings in general, saucy, delicious, dip them in, oh, dip them in ranch, or well, as you guys know, if you watch my buzzard wings tutorial for an ogre, they hate blue cheese, I hate blue cheese, so I dip that stuff in ranch. <sighs> Buffalo wings. Number two, lobster. Oh, good old Atlantic lobster. I love lobster more than, oh, 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 oh. If you haven't had, if you haven't had lobster... You haven't lived. Now, I've heard that in, like, Europe and stuff, a lobster is, like, a, this crazy expensive thing. Like, if you buy a lobster at a restaurant and you're looking at, like, a $100 bill or something like that. Well, they're expensive here, too. They're 10 bucks a pound, which is quite expensive, considering um, I've heard stories of my father telling me. Because my father grew up in um, in New Brunswick on the, uh, <clears throat> on the east coast of Canada, a place called uh, Shediac, Shediac, New Brunswick. And uh, they used to fill the whole beds of pickup trucks and lobster and bring them to parties. So that was a cool story. They used to do it all the time. Now, of course, that would cost you a near fortune. But it just shows how uh, our greed has brought an end to things like that. So lobster. Number three, lemon piccata. My mother makes this delicious lemon piccata. It's like, uh, it's like spaghetti. Spaghetti noodles, that is. Tossed with like a lemon, a, like a white lemon sauce and, and breaded chicken. There's capers in there. Man, oh man, talk about good. Baby bag ribs. Damn, I love ribs. I mean, come, hey, if you don't like ribs, come on now. Hey, if you're, pl hey, if you're playing ogres and you don't like ribs, come on now. Number five, butternut squash soup. This is something my grandmother makes all the time. I love butternut squash soup. Butternut squash soup, a wonderful, wonderful uh, winter dish. Butternut squash being a, a winter uh, a winter squash is just awesome. Number six, Hawaiian pizza. I love Hawaiian pizza. I don't know when it started, when I started liking pineapple and ham on a pizza, because I used to hate it, but somewhere along the lines, I started loving Hawaiian pizza. And to this day, I love it. We got a place near here called Gabriel's. It's a wicked pizza. Number seven, smoked salmon specifically smoked salmon eggs benedict this is something i make at home i love it it's kind of like my seal the deal thing that i use for girlfriends you know what i mean everyone's got that move that's something they do that works for them every time my thing 
Eggs Benedict. The only problem is that you eat Eggs Benedict in the morning. So one of my teachers actually told me this. She said, it's funny that your move, your move is done in the morning. Because by that time, you should have already used your move if you're waking up with her. You know what I mean? But <laughs> um, ironically enough, I've actually never made Eggs Benedict for my current girlfriend. Because she doesn't eat eggs. She doesn't like to smell them. She doesn't like them at all. So, Anywho. Eight, lasagna. Come on, lasagna. God, that's delicious. I love lasagna. It's layered. It's got meat on it. It's got cheese. Sometimes you get like the, that like layer of ricotta in there. You can get seafood lasagna. You can get lasagna with white sauce, red sauce. Man, they're the sendless. You can even get vegetarian lasagnas if you roll like that. I don't know why the hell you would. You people are weird. I'm just kidding. I respect you, even if you're a vegetarian. Um, number nine, fried clams. Oh, this is another dish that, unless you've probably been down east, by down east I mean Newfoundland, St. John's, you know, Halifax, area. well, you know, Nova Scotia in general, New Brunswick, you might not actually find fried clams. I'm sure down the coast in, uh, in the States, too, down in the Maine, I'm sure they eat fried clams as well. I don't know how they wouldn't. It's basically just you take the innard out of a clam, Batter it, deep fry it, dip that sucker in uh, tartar sauce. Oh, man. I keep saying to my mother, I should open up a fried clam wagon in Ottawa because there's no fried clams in this area, and I'm telling you it would make a killing. The only problem is I'd have to find a source of fresh uh, Atlantic uh, uh, Atlantic clams to come in, and you know I'd have to find someone to be able to fly that in constantly and reliably because if I ran out of clams, you'd be fucked. Number 10, fish and chips. What hey, what's better than some good old fish and chips? I don't know, cause I love fish and chips. Big old piece of deep fried fish with some nice crispy chips in there. Oh, man, what also could have made the list? Cause that was number ten. Was poutine? I love poutine. Um, I don't know. I'm not actually not I'm actually sure if the if the if other people have poutine like other countries wise or. But patin is um, a big serving of chips, fries, um, and uh, they put cheese curds all over the top, and then they dump brown gravy all over the whole thing, and you eat it with a fork, and the cheese melts all over the fries. You got this heavy gravy. It'll it'll fuck you. You'll fuck your heart up. Like you're probably gonna die young if you eat that every day. But they are delicious. They are delicious. So guys, that's that's my that's my food that I love. And just like that, I think I've burned enough time to get these guys to dry. Oh, I totally have. Hey, man, Connor, you're a, you're a smart you're a smart guy, Connor. Damn right you are. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Alright, let's slather on some of this Agrax Earthshade. Agrax Earthshade. One of the finest shades in the GW line. It's a nice, dark, chestnut, chocolate brown. I'm gonna add water to this mixture. We don't want pure. We don't want a, a pure dose of this of this uh, juice. So we're gonna mix that up with some water, and then we're gonna apply this liberally to the entire miniature. Now, like I said, remember that these are flat surfaces, so you're gonna see this pooling in ways that you probably don't want it to, but that's okay. Okay, so. Because we are going to go over this entire miniature again in other colors. So don't worry too much about uh, how the wash is affecting the uh, the bare skin. Because that's, uh, that's just something we'll sort out in due course. But the areas you want to pay attention to are like um, the recesses, um, like beneath the leg joints. Things like that. Areas where you're going to want darkness in the end game. Okay? Don't worry about that pooling or anything up on the top rises. That'll sort itself out. Okay. I just about ran out of it there, of my mixture. So now that I've already added lots of water to it, I'm going to take pure stuff and I'm going to put that on the top and let that trickle down. That's one of my little tricks. Because now, now that there's water already on the miniature, it'll kind of um, disperse by itself. Eh, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. If you don't trust me, don't use it. 
Okay. So there we go. We got some wash on this bad boy. Now we will add some wash to this guy. Fantastic. And on it goes. They should have made the saber tusks entirely furry, like a wolf in a way, but like look like a tiger. I mean, I know this looks like a tiger, but in my opinion, I mean, it, yeah, it looks like a tiger, but it also looks a little bit like a hyena, <laughs> um, like in stature wise. Okay. The wash is now applied. While that's drying on some of the air, the areas I just go over lightly with a brush if I see any hardcore pooling going on. Not that it's going to matter in the end, like I told you, I wasn't lying. Um, it doesn't really matter, but if you can save yourself any trouble, hey, just go over lightly with a brush. This guy looks like he could use a little bit more wash. I'm going to take a full dose there and drop it just like that. And just spread that over the top. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Looking good.